You know, I've heard of a rising star, but I've never heard of a riding star. Hello everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. This time, we're going to be taking on the Pokemon League. And with all of our preparations finally made, let's have a look at the lineup. I made a slight modification to Radon's moveset. There we go. I decided to teach it Stealth Rocks over Crunch. The main reason for this is... Well, plain and simple, Crunch isn't going to be that useful to us going forward when it comes to just type matchups. Other moves that has just do better damage and against the other things that Crunch would be better suited for, I'm just not going to be using Radon against it because it has no real reason to be used against those Pokemon. So, with all of that done, let's go. Yep. And, Indigo Plateau, the highest Pokemon Authority Pokemon League Headquarters. Okay, so just doesn't have anything else, alright? And with that, let's keep going. First up, we have Lorelei. Ran into her before, earlier in the game. Welcome to Pokemon League. Oh, it looks like you finally made your way here. Sure took you a while, though. Well then, allow me to reintroduce myself. I am Lorelei of the Elite Four. No one can best me when it comes to icy Pokemon. Freezing moves are powerful. Your Pokemon will be at my mercy when they are frozen solid. That's because frozen Pokemon can't do a thing in battle. Well, unless you use a Fire-type move or Scald. Are you ready? And with that, our Pokemon League battles have begun. Challenges by Elite Four Lorelei. She leads off with a Dugong. This will be level 51 with the moves Aqua Jet, Ice Shard, and Waterfall. Now, it may seem absolutely idiotic to lead off with an Aerodactyl into a Water Ice type. However, I have a plan. Pikachu call in support. Actually, I didn't even anticipate this was going to be happening, but this is actually quite good, as it does uh, sure up my one misgiving about this, giving me an Omni Boost. Waterfall. Okay, so I would have been able to do that. Well, then again, okay, I would have been able to take that regardless. This is why I wanted Stealth Rock, and also the reason why I was a bit worried about leading off Aerodactyl in this fight. Stealth Rock just matches up very, very well against a large portion of the Kanto Elite. And this is going to be fine. I have actually rarely ever used uh, Stealth Rocks, even in competitive play, because I don't play a lot of singles. I play almost exclusively doubles. So I've actually rarely ever used Entry Hazard at all, even in so, uh, so, uh, single battle draft leagues I have used it in occasion. I didn't even actually see what she's going to go into next. I'm assuming it's going to be Jinx. So we're going to swap out into... Let's go to Melmetal. Yeah, and this is one of the things that I meant. Is that, you know, Jinx is a psychic type, it is weak to crunch, but also it is more overwhelmingly weak to rock or my rock moves. King, struggle. Yep, that was right, it was Jinx. Yep. For Jinx, Lovely Kiss, Psychic, and Blizzard. That little bit of chip damage from Stealth Rocks is doing quite well. That's exactly what I wanted before. But she does get Lovely Kiss off. It does put me to sleep, unfortunately. So Melmetal is going to be out of commission for, unfortunately, a little bit here. But hopefully uh, Melty Face is going to wake up. Eh, right as I said, Mel Mel Melmetal woke up. Exactly. That's one of the good things about being the slower Pokemon when they use this lead would be, ooh, critical variance. Again, as I mentioned, the critical hit chance increase does come from friendship, so there is that. Slowbro, one member of a team that is not crippled by Stealth Rocks. Level 51, Surf, Psychic, and Flamethrower. Yeah. I've mentioned a couple of things that, yes, Gen 1 Pokemon have pretty bonkers movesets, and, well, Slowbro is a textbook example of that. It's a water-type capable of learning Flamethrower. 
Granted, there is Octillery, which does learn Flamethrower these days as well, but Octillery makes a little more sense than the tank. Planestone's dug into slower, as you see, it doesn't deal as much damage. I was also wrong. You do not get access to the Mega Stone salesperson right now. You have to beat the Pokemon League in order to get access to it. So you only have access to the 10 to 4 Mega Stones at the moment, and that... Okay, that did a lot of damage. Oh... Uh... I have to think that they have some modicum of handy investment, because I know for certain, just the sheer amount of time we've had Venusaur on the team, Wildvine should be at maximum happiness. Even then, you know, even if it's not, it would still have a significant stat boost with respect to, you know, of course, uh, all the happy things. Lapras is her ace. Level 52. Again, doesn't seem too powerful. You know, relatively speaking, again, we are level 53. I did want to have an advantage to it going in because of the later Elite Four battles. But this thing is actually quite bulky. And if my assumption is correct in that it does actually have candy investment, all the more reason that that Stealth Rocks is going to be, hel going to be helping us. Considering your team is quite weak to Stealth Rocks, yeah, it even chunked that pretty well. It... Yeah, I mean, again, it always quick lights. And there's Hydro Pump. Even with our evasion chance, it's still connected. And yeah. Again, level advantage. Granted, we're still pretty frail. But again, Lapras isn't that much of a special attacker. So again, I have to think they have some amount of candy investment. I have not found anything that actually states if they have awakened values. But I mean... I let me, let me check again, just to make sure. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they do actually have one. It, does, it doesn't seem like they actually have one. Her final Pokemon is her Cloyster. In my opinion, this is by far the weak... I mean, even not in my opinion. This is by far the statistical weakest member of her team. Cloyster is a quite powerful physical attacker with actually quite very respectable defense. But, specially speaking, its special defense is paper thin and its special attack is absolutely garbage. Its moves are Ice Beam and Hydro Pump, so it really can't capitalize on its decent, you know, its good physical attack stat with any of its stat moves, and its only physical move is Spike Cannon, which, because it doesn't have Skill Link, is not going to always go off five times. Fortunate, but them with the breaks, that is one of the disadvantages of not having abilities in this game. But, thankfully, we ran to beat Lorelei. Actually, depending on how fast we actually go through this, we might do all the ones. Looks like you've gotten stronger since we last met. Go on ahead. You'll get a taste of Pokemon's power. Yeah. Again, the amount of experience we got right there is pretty much the reason I wanted to go into this with a little over-leveled for the first two battles is later on... If, say, we went in even leveled for this fight, then we would distinctly be at a level disadvantage going forward. We do have some rare candies, which is made to give a bit of a buffer zone, but that is the overall intention. Next up, Elite Four's Bruno. We are not going to want to lead off with Aerodactyl for this one. Aerodactyl was great. Radon, sorry, not, not Aerodactyl. Radon was absolutely fantastic for that first one. But I'm thinking for this fight, I might want to actually lead off with Shiny and... Actually, I have a plan. Actually, do we have, sur we have Surf? Yes, I have Surf. I'm not Sludge Bomb. I'm thinking actually of getting rid of... Because at this point... The... Mm. Yeah, actually, at this point, Flamethrower really isn't going to be offering much of anything. And even then, if... Even if I think, yeah, I want to add Flamethrower back, I can always reteach it. Flamethrower was really there in case we met up with some Grass types, which we couldn't deal with, but then we have ways of dealing with Grass types now. So I've decided to change the moveset now. But, I am Bruno of the Elite Four. The rigorous training of all people have become strong without limit. I've lived up, I've lived and trained for my fighting type Pokemon. And that will never change. Maxis, was it? We grind you down with our superior power. Hoya! I love how he just jumps and immediately just sits. Just 
bones of steel this man has. Also, the forget explosions are awesome. We are challenged by Elite Four Bruno. He leads off with an Onyx, which might seem strange, but it makes sense when you really think about it. Onyx is a rock type, and what did we just teach our Aerodactyl? Stealth Rocks. What does Stealth Rocks do? It really gives water types, uh, not water types, it really gives flying types a bad time. And he is a fighting type trainer. His moves are Stealth Rocks, Iron Tail, and Earthquake. It really isn't much of a threat at all. It is primarily all speed and, well, not even all speed. It has a very above average speed for a rock type. That's well, quite solid speed for a rock type. Not, no, not aerodactyl level, of course, but it is quite a bit fast for a rock type and all physical defense. No special defense, and he made a big mistake in not going for stealth rocks right there. He's going to his Hitmonchan next. This will have all of the punching moves, so Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, and Ice Punch. That's all. Hitmonchan has significantly more special defense than Hitmon Lee, which he also does have, and I think for that reason, Aerodactyl is best suited to be facing down Hitmonchan. Granted, it would probably be better to go for Hitmon Lee when it comes to this, but overall, we're going to go with this. There we go. Radon flies up high. This is going to be one of the ones we're not going to be using, of course, Stealth Rocks, because of Team of Fighting Types doesn't exactly do well with Rock. Stealth Rocks. They don't really take that much damage from it, and it would be better to just go for, well, straight for the throat with a superior, super effective fly. Straight down on the Hitman Chan. Again, we're not getting a whole lot of experience. That was my big worry. Hollyrath is his next Pokemon. Waterfall, Body Slam, Super Power, level 52. Yeah, this thing definitely packs quite a punch with its moves, but it does, well, at the very least with super power. But the problem is that its best move triples its stats, and other than that, it doesn't really have great offensive stats. It's sort of a bit of a bulky attacker, as in bulky-ish. It can take hits okay enough, but it just really doesn't have the damage to deal out hits too powerfully. Again, that thing just took... A pedal dance from us. Yeah. And that was what he resisted Super Power. It did some decent damage to us, and if that was a neutral hit, it would definitely I wouldn't it wouldn't have done, you know, too 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 much damage to be worried about, but it definitely hit decently hard. Again, considering we do have the stat boost applied to our damage and to our defense. It's quite respectable. But with that, Wild Vine is confused due to fatigue, but He's going into his last Pokemon, well not his last Pokemon, his ace Pokemon, his Machamp, level 53, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Super Power. This thing is scary. This thing is very, very scary. It hits very hard, and while it isn't necessarily too quick, it still hits quite hard and can take hits quite well. Thankfully, it doesn't have uh, no guard, so that's a little, a little bit of a help for us. I'm gonna go for Psychic. I am fairly certain this is not gonna take it down, but I can be helpful at least. Yeah, it wasn't even close. I mean, it did a decent amount of damage, but it was... Yeah, that was not exactly close to taking it down. But we're gonna finish it off this turn with another Psychic. See, this is kind of the one good thing about not necessarily taking things down in a single hit is that, or not even getting close to taking them down in a single hit, is it doesn't get them into range where the NPCs decide, oh, I'm gonna go heal and make my Pokemon. So it actually speeds up the fight. Hitmonlee, his final Pokemon, Brick Break, Feint, and Rock Slide. Not overly fantastic in my opinion it's it's got a bit of a better stat spread at least uh, from an offensive damage perspective than hitmon chan does and it also has a better move than hitmon chan but it's coverage isn't as good granted again coverage is not as good as the same attack bonus when it comes to the neutral scenario but still you can go with a floaty fall thankfully it doesn't miss again still annoyed about those fre frequent misses 
that we kept getting that one day. And again, the avoid. See, why can we avoid Brickway with Cannibal Hydro? But as I said, here now is when he is going to be in a little bit of lower health. So he's going to. Wait. Do you not have. Do you not have. Really? I could have sworn that you would heal him. But, you know what? For a bit for me to complain about not having to deal with healing. But with that, we have taken down two of the four members of the Elite Four. 10,600 Pokemon money for winning. You defeated me, then my job is done. Well, I may not like it, but go. Go face your next challenge. We're going to be doing just that. Of course, we're going to be healing up. And I think we are going to be cutting this episode a bit short after we face the next member of the Elite Four. So we'll save the last member of the Elite Four and the champion for, uh, well, the final episode of the finale. Granted, it isn't going to be the finale finale of the series. We still have a lot doing post-game. Surprisingly, this game has a quite expansive post-game. Read a lot of things to do but require grinding for a post-game. But it's, it, it's, it's, it's what it is. Okay, let's look what we've got here. What would be a good lead off for you? Actually, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think this is a good one. Actually, wait, no, no, you're you're better suited for other things. Actually, yes, I think we're gonna lead off with Timmy B for this one. Main reason is her lead off scares me. And you'll see why when we go over the. I am Agatha of the Elite Four. I hear Oak's taking a lot of interest in you, child. The old Duff was at once tough and handsome, but that was decades ago. He's a shadow of his former self. You'd know about shadows, wouldn't you? Now he just wants to fiddle with his Pokedex. He's a fool. Pokemon for battling. Maxis, show me a real trainer battle. Show me how a real trainer battles. I like Agatha's personality. I like her. All right, we are challenged by Elite for Agatha. Her team necessarily, I could disagree with a lot on. Arbok, level 53. Front, Poison Jab, and Glare. That is why I wanted, that is why I was actually scared of this thing. That glare is a perfectly accurate move that will always inflict paralysis. Granted, Arbok is not necessarily the fastest thing in the world, but still, this thing is surviving a super effective psychic, meaning none of my other moves would have been able to take it down unless we managed to critical hit it. And if any of the other members of my team got paralyzed, well, save for really one, and of course the devil defense drop. Probably gonna paralyze too. Oh no, we actually. Thank you, Timmy. You're actually surviving right now. There we go. Arbok taken down. Yeah, that Arbok scares me. The main reason is her team, despite the fact that I actually don't really like her team composition, her Pokemon are not great in my opinion. They actually do match up quite well against us. Next is her Weezing, level 53 as well. Sludge Bomb, Shadow Ball, and Thunderbolt. Yeah. Not necessarily a strong moveset for it, I would say. But it's something. Let's test out our new and improved Shiny with its new and improved Outrage. Weezing! I have a vendetta against your kind, Weezing. You, you have done very annoying things in a previous series for me. Okay, I'm not certain that an out that two outrages would take you down. So let me just try and go for an ice beam, see if I can at least get a freeze. I mean, freeze and paralysis from Thunderbolt and ice beam are the same chances. And overall, freeze is just better. There's a slide bomb. Oh. Okay then. I'm very glad that I did not use outrage. Because that is going to change everything up. Okay, this is not good for our hero. Uh, Shiny is going to lose if I keep it in. Let's go to Melmetal. Hopefully, it goes again for using Sludge Bomb. We are immune to Sludge Bomb plus the steel type. Yeah, that, again, the poison. It's she, She's been getting quite lucky with these moves. I mean, she got the defense drop from Crunch and now the poison for Poison. When it's slow, I'm a 30% chance of inflicting poison, so that does make a little bit of sense. 
Also, yes, you will notice I did teach Superpower to Melmetal. I opted to do this really because we're not gonna be we're not really gonna be encountering screens in the Elite Four. There are Pokemon that will be setting screens that at least have the ability to set screens. However, those Pokemon are not necessarily what I would regard as a threat, and I think realistically speaking, we'll deal with them before they even get the opportunity to set up screen. As well as the screens that they set up really don't mesh with the Pokemon's uh, defensive stats and weaknesses, so the screens will likely not be too intrusive. But there we go, Melmetal gained a level. The main reason I don't want anyone fainting is I don't want anyone to not get any experience. I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna get Mega Punch. It's a normal type move, and it's got you know, quite good power. But our other moves have superior type effectiveness, and overall, that's just a much better avenue for things. Gengar. Now here's the thing. She has two of them. This. This makes me wonder. Because she does have two of them, and I would rather have had one. There's one that I would prefer to face. Alright. I'm anticipating she's going for the big one. Because one of them is level 53, one of them is level 54, and they do have different movesets. I will see which one this is before going into them, because I don't want to have to repeat myself later. And also go get them mixed up. Please be the level 45. Oh no, 55, 54. Okay, this is her level 53. This one has Shadow Ball, Willow Wisp, and Sludge Bomb. This one is very techy, and I hope. Okay, good, we do outspeed it. I was hoping we'd outrun it because that Willow Wisp scared. Wow. You. You took that hit like a champ. I don't like that. I don't like that you took that hit bit like a champ. I really don't like that. Okay, and that one goes on. Okay, well that means that the other one... Granted, that could have just been a very low damage roll. That, that... That might have been a low roll. Her goal bat is coming in next. Air Slash, Crunch, Quick Attack. Yeah. Again, when I mentioned her team is not exactly something I think is good, despite your know, liking whole disposition, this is what I meant. Granted, it comes with the territory of being a Poison-type specialist within Kanto, when there's really not a lot- there's a lot of Poison types, but not a lot of them are great. So, that makes sense. But yeah, also it is level 53, but then again, they are surviving things. I- I'm very curious why things are taking- what is with them getting all these- these lucky stat things? I mean, that is the second time she has used Crunch, and both times it got the best. I'm fairly certain Crunch only has a 20% chance of inflicting a stat drop chance. What the heck, game? But, we have defeated her Golbat, and the last up is her final Gengar. This is actually quite good for a Gengar. Level 53, uh, 54. Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, Dazzling Gleam. It actually has counter coverage for, uh, for Dark Types. Granted, it's probably not going to take out any Dark Types. But it definitely has some, uh, it definitely got some ways of fighting back. Now let's see if that was just a bad damage roll, or if this was actually the, yeah. That was a roll. That was a damage roll. Was like, there is no way Gengar is surviving an Earthquake from an Aerodactyl consistently at this level. And... With that, she goes down. So that was just a bad damage roll on my part. Which is good to know. And with that, we've defeated Agatha. Oh my. Oh my. You're something special, child. And with that, I think that's all for today. You win. I say that old Duff sees in you now. I have nothing to say. Nothing else to say. Run along now, child. And with that, I'll see you guys next time when we continue on through the rest of Pokemon League.